Hey everyone, welcome to another DE Hammer video. In this video, we're going to be going over how to turn a simple piece of hobby wood like this into a portrait like this. We will be using a free open source program called Stipple Gen 2. There'll be a link down in the description that you can go to to download it. And before we jump into how to make everything, if you're enjoying these videos and they're helping you out, hit that subscribe button and uh, give me a thumbs up on the video. So let's uh, jump into how we're gonna do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I got 150, or 100 uh, grit sandpaper here, and I am just gonna sand this down a little bit here. Just going in a small circular pattern. Okay, go over it one more time. Again, just nice small circular pattern here. You also want to pick out the best side of your board. We will be painting it black, but I prefer to get a uh, side with well, there's not a section like that right there next I got my hand sander and just got a 150 there <laughs> dust that off and let's go switch over to the 220 grit real quick All right, now I got my 220, so let's hit it with that. I'm gonna bust out a paper towel and my electric air blower here, just to get all this dust off so we can spray paint this and get this set up to cut. All right, now we're ready to put on the black coat of paint. All right, now that our hobby wood is drying after spray painting, let's jump into the software and uh, look at that and look at how I prep the image before we actually get the stipple done. Now I am going to be using Illustrator. So uh, if you don't have Illustrator, you can use um, Inkscape or whatever other uh, software you have there. So you can keep this totally free. You don't have to have any proprietary or paid software to do it. So what we're seeing here is a picture of my daughter. We went to the uh, state fair a couple years back. And what I did here is all I did was I traced it out. As you can see here, that yellow line right there. Clip that out. And then I just uh, did control seven to make a clipping mask just to get her. Now, the reason I wanted to do that was because all of this background you're seeing, the Texas barbecue, the Italian, it's just a lot of extra noise. It's going to create a lot of extra pixels it has to read. And this is just a way of speeding it up. So I have actually already gone ahead and exported this. And I did e export this with a transparent background. I didn't put it behind black and I didn't put, put a white background on it. And we'll look and see some of uh, the reasons why uh, here once we jump into Stipple Gen. So this is Stipple Gen. Um, when you first load it, it will start automatically uh, processing and doing everything with a preloaded image that comes with the software that you can see. Let's just look, go over the controls a little bit. This first box here, this is the number of stipples. This is the number of basically stipples or dots you're going to have from your image. Okay. Now we can switch this between white stipples on a black background or we can do uh, black stipples on a white background. And you're going to want to play around with your different images, go back and forth, and see what works best with your image. One of the things I do want to say is, I mean, I have a pretty decent computer. Um, 
And I have this one up at 4,805 stipples. And this still bogs down my computer uh, a pretty good chunk. Um, you can go all the way up to 5,000, uh, I'm sorry, 10,000. And there is, if you look through the documentation, they say if you press X, you can push it up to 10,000. But they're not sure how well that's going to work. Uh, I found in playing around anything from 2,000 is what the default is up to about four or 5,000 works pretty well. Underneath that, that's where you would load the image or file you, you want to work on. Uh, then you have stay, save the stipple file the, uh, as an SVG. Uh, that's what we'll, we'll go ahead and do that with this one so we can start kind of importing some of these for you. And now I have an SVG uh, that we can go um, import into Carbide Create or whatever your uh, CAM software is uh, to do this. All right, underneath that is the Save TSP, the Traveling Salesperson. Haven't had time to get into it, but it's basically the travel paths. All right, next here, uh, we have minimum dot size and um, dot size range. So let me see if I can, we're gonna turn that off so we can see here. Now, one of the things is when you load an image, it automatically starts updating and doing its thing. So if you start messing around with the stipples, it's going to keep reloading and going back to one. You can see here, uh, generations uh, completed, it's 112. That's how many times it's generated through to get this image. If you change the stipple count, or if you change white stipples on black background and black, and black stipples on white background, it will restart. However, on the minimum dot size, you can go and change these and get it to the way you want. And if you want all the stipples the same size, you just put everything down to like that. But we'll put bump this back up here. And then a uh, black cutoff. Um, when it's white stipples on black background, it's black. But when it becomes uh, black stipples on white background, it turns to white. And it just kind of goes in there and you can see uh, it's kind of like a chroma effect. But that's the reason why I go in and crop out my images and take out the background. That way you have your focal point. All the stipples are focused on your subject. You're not going to have a lot of background noise interfering and taking up more calculation. Uh, if you want to see your original image, you can press here. And see there's your original image. Just turn it off and on there. Cells. Um, That'll show when we uh, change images. So I'll leave that on real quick. Um, right now, this, this is where you pause it. So you can pause and play basically. And then this is the plotting path or the PSP that we talked about er earlier. Turn that off. So before we jump into Carbide Create and or your CAM software, uh, let's go over the min dot size real quick. Now that's just gonna be the minimum size of the smallest dot. And then you have a range of from the smallest to the largest size. What you wanna avoid here is getting so big that the dots start really overlapping. You're gonna lose uh, some of the effect. So you wanna make sure you keep it to where your dots are not overlapping. Let's jump into Carbide real quick and get this thing ready to get thrown onto the uh, CNC machine. All right, so let's come in here. We, uh, my work uh, area size on this one is 304.8 millimeters by 304.8 millimeters. Well, good. Um, thickness, it's not gonna really matter in this case, uh, but we'll put it in there. It's uh, just under three, but again, not gonna matter. We're not cutting anything out. We're just, uh, we're gonna be using V-carb in this, so. We're going to lower, set it to the lower left. Let's hit OK. Now let's go ahead and import kind of a large file, but uh, let's group all this together. Okay, and then drag it over here. Now I do want to say what you see in Carbide compared to what you actually get is it, there is a big difference. Um, you're not getting the full effect that you would 
with the black and the white and getting that kind of gray scale look that you're going to see in the finished image. Um, let's go ahead and scale this up some. Again, there's a lot of points here, so this is going a little bit slow. Get done there, then let's center it. Okay, there we go. Now let's go into our tool paths. And for this, we're going to use V-Carve. The reason we're going to be using V-Carve as opposed to the pocket or the contour is we want to just make these little holes. All right. So let's go in real quick. We're going to use a V-Bit. So let's go select our V-Bit here. Select the right one. I'm using a 6.35 uh, millimeter diameter uh, V-Bit uh, at 90 degrees. Hit OK. I don't know why mine does that there. I've tried getting rid of it, but it does it on those for some reason. Now, depth per pass, all that, it's really not going to matter um, with the uh, V-Carve. V-Carve is going to cut down deep enough, just enough, to give you that inner uh, space in, the, in, in those circles. So it's different than your pocket where you're going to say, hey, I want to go down two millimeters. No, it's going to, the bit is going to, it knows it's a 90 degree bit. So it's going to go down just enough to carve out and leave that circle there. So we don't really need to worry about the depth per pass there. For my machine, I'm going to change the plunge rate to 350 and the feed rate to 1100. We'll hit OK. And then we'll hit OK there. And we'll let it uh, carbide do its thing here. Didn't have it selected. So let's do that again real quick. Actually cancel. There we go. Let's get in here. Select that. Now let's hit OK. And it's calculating. 316 minutes. Now don't let that number scare you if you're using carbide. This will probably take about an hour hour 20 minutes uh, that's what my experience has been on the first couple ones I tested on I wouldn't trust that 316 minutes so let's get this um, I do oh before we save let's look at the simulation I do want to show you this because it doesn't look like much of anything very hard you got to get it at the right angle kind of zoom in there and again it does not give you a good representation of what your final product's gonna be. That is one of the things about carbide uh, rate I, I'm not really thrilled with, but I do like uh, the end results. So wish you could change the, I know you can change between aluminum, brass, uh, pine, and MDF, but as you can see, none of them quite allow you to really see what it's gonna look like or give you a really good idea of what it's like. And Let's zoom in here a little bit, and you can see there are these tiny little dots right there and there and there. So that's going to help give the grayscale effect we're looking for once this is done. So now let's uh, save this G code and get it on the CNC machine and see what the end result looks like. And there it is. I'm really impressed with the results on these. Um, is there some things that can work and twerks and tweaks that can be made? Yes, of course. That, that's with anything and everything. But overall, um, I think this is going to be another great tool in your toolkit for you, for you and your CNC machine. Um, I'm really impressed with the the effect of this it's just black on white or white on black and then you get this kind of grayscale depth to it and it's just with you know black and white and varying size circles i just find that really cool do you want to say again this is the stipple generator 2 by evil mad scientist laboratories uh the, the link to this is down below and again you can read up all about it uh download it for free 
and let me know what you guys think about it. I uh, do want to mention, I do have some new stickers that I got, holographic little three inch ones. Uh, so if you're doing that sticker swap thing, uh, comment down below. We'll get something worked out. We can swap up some stickers. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. And until next time, keep making stuff.